What's going on guys, it's Stone here and welcome to investing in the stock market for beginners. So glad to do this video, so glad that you guys are here and want to know how to invest in the stock market. I don't want to spend too much time on the intro because I know a lot of people do. Just want to get straight into it. I just want to cover though my goal for this video and what you guys can expect. I want to keep it nice and simple. I want to share what I know, uh, my, my experience investing in the stock market and provide basic knowledge when it comes to the stock market. I want to try to do this all in one video and by all means you guys can skip to the other sections, the, the timestamps are below, but I highly recommend you guys stay for the full length of this video. You guys are gonna learn a ton. It's gonna be super valuable for you guys. And I also recommend you guys get a notepad, jot down some notes while we go over some of these uh, topics because some of them can be kind of confusing. The things that we're gonna go over is one, the mindset of investing. Okay, we're gonna be talking about why you should invest in the stock market. Uh, what are stocks? What are market caps? And why do, co uh, why do companies issue stocks? Why do they want stocks? How are stocks categorized? Uh, what are the risks in the stock market? The types of stocks, taxes and fees involved in the stocks, where to gather information to evaluate a stock if you want to buy one, how to buy one, how to sell a stock, uh, and some key terms that you need to know. And then I'm going to finish off by showing you guys some stock market resources. Also, please be sure to smash the like button. Uh, it's gonna help out the channel a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, be sure to share this video to at least one of your friends or family members. This took me a ton of time to edit, film, plan out for you guys. And also, uh, be sure to subscribe if you want more content from me and hit the bell to get notified when those videos come out. Thank you guys so much and let's get into it. So the mindset of investing, and this is very important and this is one of the reasons why it's the first thing to learn. Make investment decisions based on logic and the knowledge that you have in the company or stock, not emotion. Do not do that. I know when I started, I would often make the same investments as wealthy people on either YouTube or TV because I didn't really know, number one, uh, I didn't really know any knowledge on those companies. Number two, I was too lazy to, to do research, but in reality, research is fun. Uh, and we'll go over it in, in, in this video. It's fun, it's not that hard. Uh, so my recommendation is obviously do your research, uh, know everything you need to know on the company, and we'll go over that in this video. And But also find a family member or a friend that you could talk to about the stock market who has already started investing and been investing, and get their opinion on it, and just overall get as much knowledge as you possibly can on that company and stock. All right, so first things first, why should you invest into the stock market? This is stuff that school does not teach you. And one of the main reasons why you should invest in the stock market is because it's one of the best tools to grow your wealth in human history. The market has averaged a 10% annual ROI return on your investment historically. It is really, it's a really great tool to achieve financial freedom. A total of 94% of those people that have placed their net worth in the top 10% so the top 10% of people uh, that have the, the most net worth, 94% of them have owned stocks. And those families whose net worth are in the bottom 25%, only 21% of them own stock in some form. Uh, savers are losers because you, know, you are battling inflation. We all know that assets are better than cash uh, because inflation is caused by the government printing a lot of money and uh, decreasing the value of the of cash in the in the dollar uh, you are losing purchasing power by not investing every single time and every single day that you are not investing your money is losing value um, and you don't have to be a genius look I'm only 17 years old I know a lot about the stock market but I still learn every day uh, there's endless knowledge that you can learn and by no means do you need to learn everything I mean everything in this video is going to be enough information and value for you to go ahead and start investing into the stock market there are plenty of strategies to help you grow your wealth uh, over time, like index funds and ETFs, uh, and we'll talk about that later in this video. But basically, you just don't have to you know, be a genius or anything like this. It's just a smart way to uh, build your wealth and to become financially free. So like I said, we're going to be covering all the basics. So let's start off by what is a stock. A stock is a share of ownership in a company. Think of a pizza, a pizza pie, and think of each Slice is a share of that company. Buying shares gives you equity, AKA ownership in shares of that company. So when you buy a share, you own a piece of that company. Now that 
that piece is very, very small. You are one of many, many owners of that company. And yes, technically you own a tiny sliver of every piece of furniture, trademark, and contract of that company, but it doesn't mean that you can have a say in the day-to-day -day running of the business. Doesn't mean it say you have a, a you know, you're a shareholder of Microsoft, doesn't mean you could call up Bill Gates and tell him what to do. You know, or if you have a stock in a Cheesecake Factory, it doesn't mean you can run in through Cheesecake Factory and get free food. It doesn't work like that. But if you do have large percentages of the stock, I mean 10, 20, 30% of that stock, you have the right to elect uh, the board of directors. And this is just a, a elected group of individuals that make decisions on who runs the company, like the CEO, CEO uh, CFO, and the COO, and stuff like that. Uh, companies are typically valued on their market capitalization. This is their market cap. It's super simple. It's just the shares outstanding times the share price. And we'll go over that with an example of Apple. Uh, as you can see, as the time of this video is recording, shares outstanding for Apple are 16.79 billion. And uh, the share price for Apple right now is $134 for a share. So imagine uh, Apple is this pizza. And imagine that pizza is divided into 16.79 billion slices. Each one of those slices is $134. Now you don't have to pay $134 to own Apple. You can buy fractional shares, okay? So you can buy a fraction of that share. You don't have to put $134 up. You can put as low as five, $10, depending on the app or brokerage that you use to invest in. Like I said, the, the market capitalization is the shares outstanding uh, times the share price. So in this case, uh, the market cap for Apple would be around $2.25 trillion. It's a ton of money. Market cap though changes over time because share prices and shares outstanding can change over time. There's people that are constantly buying and selling the company's stock that drives the share price. So that's just an important thing to know when it comes to stocks and the stock price. Uh, why do companies issue stocks? This is very important. Corporations issue stocks in order to raise money for their business. Think of it like this. Companies give out shares, they give out slices of their company to you. In return, they get uh, money that they can use to you know, fund a new product line, uh, research and develop their company and business, and invest in the growth and just pay off any debt that they have. It's pretty self-explanatory, you know, they just give you uh, a part of equity of their business or, or, you know, corporation. And in return, they get your money so that they can uh, better their business. Now, let's talk about the difference between a preferred stock and a common stock. Don't really need to focus too much about this because most of you and most in uh, uh, me are going to be purchasing common stock but I just want you guys to uh, learn the difference. So a preferred stock are just shares that come with special voting requirements. Um, sometimes have preferred returns, which are just guaranteed returns and protection in case that company goes bankrupt. But a common stock, this is, this is just the normal stock, you know, that me or you or any other retail investor mainly focuses on. And uh, yes, it does give you voting rights, but you are the last in line to get paid out in case of liquidation, just means if the company were to go bankrupt, uh, you are also the last to get paid a dividend. Now, dividends are just a uh, portion of the company's profits that they pay you, um, it, it kind of like as a reward or a thank you um, for, for being a shareholder in their company. Now, how are stocks categorized? Now, this is very important. Like I said, uh, stocks are valued by their market cap. So there's large cap, mid cap, and small cap stocks. Like I said, we'll go, we'll go over this again. Market cap is their shares outstanding times their share price. Large cap, these are companies that have over $10 billion uh, in market cap. These are typically hard to achieve massive growth due to their size, uh, but they have a proven track record over the years and frequently offer dividends. These are big companies that uh, you know have already achieve their full growth and, you know, just keep growing like Johnson and Johnson. Uh, you know, that's, that's a, that's an example, but you also have mid cap, uh, stocks that are anywhere between 2 billion and $10 billion in market cap, not quite large cap, 
uh, they're, but they're more uh, established than small cap stocks would be. But uh, they often target um, mergers and acquisitions. So, but these are just you know, stocks that are growing. They're, they're getting big and they're getting to that large cap. And then you also have small cap. These are uh, companies anywhere between $300 million to $2 billion in their market cap. These are typically younger uh, uh, businesses and corporations that are seeking aggressive growth. They're higher risk and they don't usually pay out dividends because they use that, those earnings to, uh, to reinvest in their company. Now, let's, let's keep going further and talk about uh, growth stocks, income stocks, and value stocks. All right, so growth stocks are stocks that have big potential for growth and they're really outpacing the market. These, uh, these often typically offer no uh, dividends or typically low dividends because they're just reinvesting those earnings. Some examples of this would just be like Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, even Tesla. These, these, these companies are just growing so fast and so big, uh, they're outpacing the market. You also have income stocks. These are uh, stocks that you know give out a regular dividend payment, uh, you know, and they have a proven track record and business model that consistently grows over time and consistently increases in dividends. Some examples of this would be like AT and T, uh, Walmart, or uh, Iron Mountain. And then you also have value stocks. These are perceived to be trading below the fundamentals, the the, the PE ratio and the PB ratio, which we'll talk about later in this video. But these are typically stocks that are seen as unfavorable in the marketplace and that, uh, you know, people that just don't see uh, having huge growth. A good way of thinking about these would just be like if you were to go to an animal shelter and get a dog. Most people probably won't want to get that dog because, you know, has a lot of flea fleas on it or looks ugly or not groomed or whatever. But if you grab that, if you get that dog and you bring it home and you take care of it and make it look good that could be your best friend and it could change your life same with value stocks let's keep talking about how stocks are uh, categorized and talk about stock sectors now these are just basically um, categories of how the stocks are categorized they're an area of economy in which businesses share a product or a service there are 11 broad sectors one of them is energy this would be like oil gas coal food uh, fuel sorry, uh, et cetera. You also have materials like chemicals, uh, metals, paper, that type of stuff. Industrials like defense, aerospace, manufacturing. Then you got customer discretionary, uh, apparel, you know, household products. And then you got a ton more like consumer staples, healthcare, financials, informational technology, telecommunicational services, utilities and even real estate there's just there there's a ton there's a ton like i said there's a lot of uh, of stocks in the stock market so now let's talk about understanding risk what really is risk in general uh it's when you expose someone or something to you know danger harm loss and in this case when you're investing into the stock market it would be money risk should be equals reward uh, as investors, we are compensated for the level of risk we assume. So an example of this would be, you know, an, either investing into a, a business startup uh, versus investing into a savings account. Now, the savings account would guarantee a low return on my money, a re low return ROI, return on my investment. But also, the the business startup is not guaranteed because it's a business start. You know, it's a business starting up. Uh, you know, you really don't know what's going on with it, but the, the savings account is low risk. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a low reward, but it's a guaranteed reward rather than a business startup. It's really high risk because I really don't know what's going to go on, but it could be a high reward if that business does really well and uh, I, I get a lot of money coming back to me. Now, let's talk about types of stocks, what to buy, the pros and cons. Um, so there's five main ones. There's individual stocks, mutual funds, index funds, ETFs, and REITs. And we'll talk about each one of those. Let's talk about individual stocks first, though. The pros of individual stocks is that there's practically no fees uh, when you invest in these or they're reduced. Um, the taxes are easy to manage. The capital gain and capital loss, we'll talk about that. Uh, there's no management fee to own. 
and uh, you have complete control and understanding of what you own these companies uh, hopefully you have complete uh, understanding of these companies like i said do your research uh, some cons of it though is that it's hard to diversify your investing portfolio you have to buy you know 10 or not 10 uh, you need to buy like 20 to 100 to achieve adequate diversification so you know there's more effort there's more time because you need to uh, research each and every single one of these uh, stocks and and businesses and corporations but also you need to monitor your portfolio and make sure that it's equally diversified and balanced um, but also you know emotions play a huge factor and you you know you might get FOMO and things like that and an example of this would be you know me with Tesla you know I, I saw Tesla go like from 600 700 all the way to 800 and that's when I purchased because I had FOMO uh, you know I, my emotions were, were getting to me I was I had fear of missing out so I bought it and then it quickly went all the way down to around $597 and then I kept buying then uh, to average down my um, dollar cost average with Tesla and we'll talk a little bit more about that coming up but so now let's get into mutual funds now these are just pools of money uh, from the public to buy securities don't really focus too much on this you can do your own research but some pros of it is that there's a lot of options balance it's balanced fixed income money market income stuff like that uh, it's professionally managed so you know you can be really active you can really be passive you can really choose your risk levels also it's very diversified and liquid but some cons of it is that it's hard to evaluate there's higher fees when getting into them and uh, you know there's large cash holdings and it's not FDIC insured so don't focus too much on uh, mutual funds instead most of you will probably either uh, focus on uh, individual stocks or the next thing we're going to be talking about which is index funds and these are just uh, you know a, ba a basket of a bunch of stocks uh, that mimic a certain mark of market index like the S&P 500 which is just the top uh, 500 companies in the stock market some pros of it is that it's easy to own manage invest in achieve your goals and to build wealth um, it outperforms active management over time I think Warren Buffett bet a million dollars that uh, index funds would outperform the top hedge funds and uh, they did um, they're also low fees to get in there are practically no fees uh, but some cons of it is that you know you don't have control over your holdings there's lack of different strategies and lack of downside protection but index funds are great they're great investments uh, for, for for the general population of you guys and especially if you really don't want to know uh, too much about the stock market don't want to do the research you can literally just put your money in to an index fund have a huge variety of stocks have a huge ownership of variety of, of stocks and really just have a diversified portfolio and most people um, just in, uh, invest into index funds now let's talk about ETFs these are exchange traded funds and they're a basket of stocks that mimic a certain market sector uh, some pros of them are that they have access to many stocks low expense ratios they're really easy to own manage invest in and to achieve your goals they're sort of like index funds uh, you know you get a diverse part of the the market sector that's the only con of it though is that you only get diversification in that one industry or sector um, another con is that it's actively managed ETFs have higher uh, fees the ETFs have higher fees when investing into them and a uh, lack of downside protection they're not like um, you know hedge funds to where if the the market goes down or you know a company goes bankrupt you won't be able to you know you won't have any protection all right so now let's talk about REITs REITs are real estate investment trusts these are uh, companies that own operate and finance income producing real estate uh, think of it like a pot and this pot is uh, you know the company and a bunch of people just put their money in the pot and that money goes to uh, you know office buildings shopping centers apartment buildings stuff like that and then they give you a portion of um, the income so pros of it is that you have access to these big commercial real estate properties 
that you uh, otherwise wouldn't be able to because commercial real estate is uh, historically been unaccessible to most people, only been accessible to wealthy people. And so that's a, that's a big pro. You also get stable cash flow through dividends. Uh, these REITs have to pay out a 90% of their uh, income. And also there's a lot of liquid and a lot of money involved. Uh, but some cons of them are that they're, they have high management fees and uh, the, the dividends that you get from them are taxes, regular income, and you are subject to market risk, just like the economy crash in 2008. So moving on, let's go to the taxes and fees involved in the stock market. And a capital gain is when you sell something greater than what you bought it for. So an example of this would be like if you were to buy a stock uh, for $100 and then you sell it for $110, you'd get a capital gain of $10. Same thing with capital loss, just the you know opposite. It's when you sell something less than what you bought it for. So when you would buy a stock for $110 and you would sell it for $100, then you'd get a capital loss of $10. Now let's get into uh, you know the, the the taxes on that income. So when you have a short-term capital gain law gain or capital loss, uh, this means when you would buy a stock and sell it. Uh, within a year or less than a year, uh, that that capital gain or capital loss would be regular taxable income. So, but if you were to hold that stock for longer than a year, then it would be considered long-term capital gains, long-term capital losses, and uh, it would be you know either zero percent, fifteen percent, or twenty-five percent, depending on the stock, and you know dependent uh, dependent on filling status and income. But the main thing to know is that, you know, when you hold stocks for longer than a year, then you get less taxable uh, income on those stocks. Now, where to gather information on stocks? I highly recommend you guys use the brokerage firm that you use. I mean, most of these brokerage firms nowadays uh, have their own research platforms. You can also go to co Companies Investor Relations Report. This is just uh, basically a report that shows you the the finance uh, aspect of the business uh the 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 finance ratios metrics the profits the net profits the you know the debt everything we'll get a uh, and you know what we'll get a little into that later but you can also go to the company's website and most companies have it on there or you can just google search it um like i said learn about financial uh ratios and metrics very important it's more advanced uh, but when you're, you know, thinking of investing into individual stocks, I highly recommend you guys uh, do some, you know, independent research on PE ratio, which is price to earnings, price to book, uh, which is the PB ratio, return on equity, which is the ROE, and a lot more. I mean, there's a ton. These are just used to uh, understand the company's volatility, their value, if they're undervalued, overvalued, and really just give you more information if you uh, you know want to invest into that or not. So now let's talk about how to buy stocks. So if you're under 18, it's pretty hard for you to buy stocks, but it's still doable and it's still legal. All you have to do is you have to get a custodial account. Uh, you have to get permission from your parents and you have to sign up through either TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, E-Trade. There's a couple other more, but those are like the three uh, main ones. And you can choose whatever. I mean, I use Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab's great, um, but they're all very similar and they're all great. If you're over 18, you have access to every platform. The most popular ones are like TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, and then there's newer ones like Robinhood, Webull, M1 Finance. All those are good. They're all similar. It's just all preference. Um, now let's talk about some key terms that you need to know. Let's first start off with bear market. Now this is just trading talk for the stock market being in a downward trend or a period of falling stock prices. Basically just means uh, when the stock market as a whole is going down in value. And bull market is the exact opposite. It's when the stock market as a whole is going up in value. Um, now let's talk about averaging down. This is when an investor buys more of the stock as the price goes down. This makes it so your average price decreases. This is kind of like my Tesla uh, story I bought it at 800, then it dropped down to 600. I bought more and it made my average price go down. Now let's talk about blue chip stocks. These are just stocks that are beyond large. Um, 
These are industry leading companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, stuff like that. Uh, now let's talk about a dividend. I already covered what they are, what dividends are. Um, they're just basically a portion of the company's earnings that get paid to you basically as a thank you for uh, owning that company's stock. And they pay you on either a quarterly or annual basis. And let's let's go over you know margin margin account. It just basically lets you borrow money, take out a loan uh, from the broker to purchase an investment. Uh, highly recommend you guys don't mess with margins, but there are strategies that you know you can use margins and make a lot of money. Uh, but obviously, just do your uh, you know own independent research. Now let's talk about portfolio. Portfolio is just a collection of investments owned by the investor that makes up his or her uh, portfolio. Day trading is the practice of buying and selling stocks within the same trading day uh, before the close of the markets on that day. Very risky. I think 97% of day traders fail. So I don't recommend that. But hey, if you want to get into it, and I might get into it because uh, I just love the stock market so much and I kind of want to know uh, what they do. But don't recommend it uh, for most of you out there. A stock symbol is a uh, one to four character alphabetical root symbol that represents a publicly publicly traded company on the stock exchange think of it just like an id uh number or letter i should say volatility is the price movements of the stock or the stock market as a whole meaning if it were to if a stock were to have high volatility it means that it shoots up in price and shoots down in price very often um, and does it very big amounts if it has low volatility it means that it's pretty steady might go down and up uh, just like any other stock. But also another thing to, to, to know is that the market opens and closes every single day, opens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time and closes at 4 p.m. with after hours trading continuing until 8 p.m. It depends on uh, the exchange and market you trade in. Just you know, look it up, simple uh, Google search. Now let's talk about some stock resources that are great for you to learn more about the stock market and and just like in general, what you need to know. Uh, obviously, Google and online are great. Books are phenomenal to, to learn practically anything. Uh, books have a phenomenal source of knowledge and education in them. So do YouTube videos. YouTube videos are great. That's how I learned most of my uh, knowledge. I also did books and, you know, Googled online, but like I said, use your brokerage firm resources. Uh, almost every brokerage has their own resource, uh, that you can use and also find a mentor, find a mentor and, you know, find some buddies, get some different opinions, stuff like that. And that pretty much does it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it helped you. And if it did, please be sure to smash the like button uh, because it will help out the channel a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, also, hit the subscribe button if you want to watch more of my videos and uh, hit the bell to get notified. And please be sure to comment down below any suggestions, video ideas, anything like that in the comment section. Um, this video took me a long time to plan out, film, uh, edit. So please do all those things. You know, Share the video to at least one of your family members or friend. And, uh, you know, just thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.